Welcome back to the channel guys. Today, we've got an exciting recap of the story The White Wolf's Bride. Sit back and enjoy. Beast men and humans, those who devour and those who are devoured, a marriage between them can only be considered unorthodox. But even so, SAE had decided she would leave this man as the wife of the White Wolf. In this peaceful looking home, one wouldn't anticipate the chaos lurking inside of it. A certain woman makes her entrance inquiring about SAE's whereabouts, but she's informed that she's still cleaning the entryway. Then, there's SAE who's still struggling to scrub the floor quickly despite her dizzy state. Suddenly, water splashes on her, and it's the woman from earlier, asking what she's spacing out for. This woman reminds her of her instruction to have every bit of floor in the manor cleaned by morning, and asks why she isn't finished yet. It becomes evident that this woman mistreating SAE is her aunt. SAE tries to explain that she passed out while cleaning, but her aunt dismisses her excuses and orders her to finish the job. Her auntie kicks her and reminds her that she came back home crying after getting married, and she was kind enough to let her stay so the least she can do is help around the house. SAE's sister, Chio, even mocks her unkempt appearance. The ill treatment toward her was something the servants gossiped about. They mention that the auntie is so nice to Lady Chio, her younger daughter, but she makes SAE do chores she wouldn't even make the servants do. They see her as a nuisance who just came back to the Fujigamine family after getting married, sometimes she even catches them gossiping about her. When SAE was 15 years old, she was the only survivor of a fire that killed both her parents, and she was adopted by her uncle who had loathed her from the beginning. He always reminded her of why he took pity on her and accepted her, and he married off when she was just 16 years old. The marriage failed, and she was driven out from the house as well and now she's 25 years old already. She believes that no one needs a woman her age, but she doesn't have any connections that would help her live alone as a woman. What choice does she have other than to be thankful that they are letting her live here? The scars on her hands never heal no matter how much time passes because of all the chores she does with her hands. She has a dog called Maru, which her late parents adopted for her because she loved animals and she considers the dog her only family. Inside the house, Chio is informed by her parents that she's going to be married off to a beast man from the Kamashiro family. Her mother tries to convince her that the family might be beast men, but they have the rank of the count and they're a clan of apothecaries that the entire empire relies on. She even believes that this union will unite their families. Her mother tries to convince her further, but she firmly stands her ground that she refuses to marry a savage beast man. So, they bring up an idea to replace Chio with SAE to become the beast's fiancé. The Kamashiro family is a family of white wolves, feared by all. It is said that they devour anyone who they dislike and that the family head is a wolfman who has committed all the atrocities possible. They verbally torture her telling her to make herself useful for their family. Her uncle even warns that under no circumstances should she tell them that she's already had a failed marriage. She was sent away without being able to bring Maru with her. She realizes that she needs to prepare herself to be a suitable bride for the Kamashiro family, even though she's only marrying into the family in someone else's position. Right now, she must do her best to serve her new husband. Finally, she arrives and her presence is announced to Lord Suhako. A spacious plot of land in the middle of a forest, on which a beautiful mansion quietly stands, that is the Kamashiro estate. The Kamashiro family has served the empire as apothecaries for ages and the current head of the family is the ninth, Lord Suhako Kamashiro. Is he as terrifying a man as the rumors say? SAE asks, staring at the building. She sits in the living room, trying to calm herself down, and then she recalls her sister's terrifying words to her concerning her new husband, but she asserts that it's fine, still trying to stay calm. Suddenly, a man with pure white hair and golden eyes comes out and it's Lord Suhako Kamashiro. She stands up to greet him and introduces herself, but he glares and says that on an occasion like this, he never thought a human woman would show up. Furthermore, he says that he told his mother that marrying a human was unthinkable, even if it was for the sake of the Kamashiro family. Then, he asks her if she has ever seen a beast man before, while his human form gradually starts changing to that of a white wolf, 
He warns that she'll probably regret ever coming there once she sees him in this form. All the while, SAE stands there in shock as she watches his human body transform into a white wolf. Isn't that terrifying? He asks. She responds with a negative affirmation, shivering in fear. Despite all his efforts to scare her, she boldly remarks that she came to the Kamashiro estate prepared to become his wife. After hearing this, he mentions that she'd better try to get the people here to acknowledge her as his fiancé, though she'll probably run away soon enough, and then he walks away. What a terrifying scene that was, she says, holding her shaky arms. Later that day, the servants in the estate gossip about her. It remains a mystery to them that a beast man and a human are getting married. They also believe that she's just going to flee in fear soon enough. After all, Lord Suhako hates humans and there's no way it would work out. Thinking to herself, SAE laments that it seems she's not welcome inside the Kamashiro estate either. Her uncle's family and her first marriage, she wasn't welcome anywhere. But still, she didn't want to give up just yet on finding a place for herself. So now, she's all set to do some chores, but the servants insist on doing them despite her plea to help out. While she's still talking to the servants, Lord Suhako overhears her voice and watches her through the window. He tries to figure out the faint scent he smelled when he was close to her. I know it from somewhere, he says, as he continues to watch her. It's been 10 days since she came to the Kamashiro estate as Lord Suhako's fiancé. Whenever she tries to help out with something, it is always perceived as a pretense. She can't blame them for thinking that way though. Humans and beastmen have lived separately since long ago, with very few relations between them, which is why she knew they weren't going to accept her very easily. However, she's determined to at least do whatever she can to help out until the engagement gets called off. Back when she was at the Fujigamine household, whenever her heart was about to break from the pain, Maru was always by her side. But now, this place is filled with beastmen rumored to harm humans. Luckily, she's still alive. While SAE wanders around the estate one day, she comes across a servant who fell carrying laundry. Seeing that the servant has hurt her wrist, she rushes to help her do the laundry. After they are done washing, SAE uses her handkerchief to cool the servant's injured wrist. The servant wears a big smile and thanks her, but Lord Suhako's presence interrupts them. He can't believe that she's still in the estate. I need to talk to you, come with me, he says, with his eyebrows furrowed. As soon as they get inside, he slams his hand on the door behind her, startling her and then he starts talking about how stubborn she is and the fact that he did not expect her to try to win over the servants by helping them. In defense, she says she's not trying to win them over and then she asks him if he hates humans. With his fangs out, he affirms that he hates them. He explains that beast men have a long history of being discriminated against by humans, they call them savage and filthy. Then he asks if she also thinks the same thing. She recalls all her encounters in the estate and replies that she doesn't think that at all. So, he reminds her that she said she came prepared to become his wife, but he also informs her that becoming a beastman's wife doesn't only mean existing inside the manor. He mentions that she has to live with beastmen and accompany him to social events, and unlike humans, beastmen have rut periods. He leans closer and adds that when he's in a rut, he desires her physically as his wife. Somewhat shocked, she blushes on hearing this, but memories from her previous marriage flash through her mind. She begins trembling and coughing while apologizing and pleading for him not to hit her. Although he's surprised, he draws her closer, hugs and tells her to calm down. As soon as she can finally breathe, she calls out his name and he immediately springs her out of his body. Then, he apologizes for scaring her and walks away. Now alone, SAE thinks to herself, wondering why his voice and arms felt so gentle. SAE's first marriage was decided upon immediately after her uncle took her in, and her ex-husband was the only son of a kimono seller. He was a cheerful worker and so wonderful a husband that everyone around her was jealous, but, he was a completely different person at home. He'd always hit and call her all sorts of names. Everything was torture to her. While she does her chores, 
She recalls what Lord Suhako said about desiring her physically when in rut, but her past experiences make her dread that moment. Still in thoughts, she overhears some other beastmen talk about her saying that no matter how much she helps them, there's no way they could trust a human because it's useless. The servant she helped earlier with her injured wrist feels sorry for her, seeing how badly she's being treated but SAE remains firm in her belief that it isn't useless. She inwardly remarks that she just needs to try harder and one day, they might accept her, or maybe not. Even Lord Suhako thinks she's nothing more than a nuisance, although his arms were quite gentle as he held her when she was panicking, which is exactly why she wants to keep trying for just a little bit longer. As she continues in her thoughts, she notices that her body can no longer move. Subsequently, Lord Suhako bumps into the maid from earlier and inquires about SAE's whereabouts. The maid's delayed response makes him wonder if SAE finally got fed up and left, but she informs him that she collapsed with a fever. The maid explains that she had something to ask SAE a while ago, so she visited her room and peeked inside when she didn't get a response, but she had already collapsed by then. She also informs him that SAE is currently resting in her room in the annex. This makes Lord Suhako reflect on the fact that humans are so feeble compared to beastmen. Even though they're so weak, they're always looking down on beastmen just because they're the majority. Nothing good comes from dealing with humans, he remarks, as he walks away. Meanwhile, SAE is in her room struggling with nightmares from her past when she suddenly feels a hand on her forehead. She's left in shock as she opens her eyes only to find out that it's Lord Suhako. She quickly springs up and apologizes to him, but he assures her that she doesn't have to get up as he was just checking her temperature which is still quite high. So, he opens a box and takes out a bottle of medicine. He administers it to her and instructs that she chew it slowly before swallowing. She gulps down the medicine while noting that Beastman medicine is an incredibly valuable drug that they say only the Kamashiro family can make in this time and age. Yet, he gave such valuable medicine to someone like her. Could this be the beginning of their love? She smiles and thanks him, and also apologizes for causing trouble for him and goes back to sleep immediately. Lord Suhako can't help but notice her thin wrists, you can tell she wasn't getting enough nutrition. When he hugged her before, he could tell she was horrifically thin all throughout her body but thinness isn't the only thing that concerns him. It looks like she has her own problems. As the daughter of a well-known merchant family like the Fujigamines, he had expected she would have been spoiled growing up. He thought she was just sticking around because she didn't get along with her parents, it's not like his estate is a nice place for humans either. He knew that his female servants were incredibly suspicious of a human bride, and he too wanted her out as soon as he met her. That was why he took on his bestial form and tried to make out that they would eat her. She was probably terrified and he's the one who pushed her so far that she collapsed. One thing still bothers him though, how could she smile and thank the same person who drove her into a corner and why won't she run away? Why is it that his heart gets so jumbled when he thinks of her? So many questions run through his mind. It's the next day and SAE wakes up feeling better, it must be thanks to the medicine that Lord Suhako Kamashiro gave her. She also notices that she didn't have any scary or sad dreams either. So much was happening to her that she just got faint-hearted. She slides the door open while remarking that if she keeps on causing trouble without getting any results, then she won't be able to stay at the Kamashiro estate. She gasps on realizing that Lord Suhako is seated just by her doorpost. She quickly bows and apologizes about all that happened yesterday, but he insists that he caused trouble for her so she shouldn't apologize. To her surprise, he asks if her fever is better off now, meanwhile, she was thinking that he came to scold her, so she affirms and attributes it to the medicine he gave her. You don't need to thank me, I just did as an apothecary should do, he says while staring at her. He notices that she's probably about to go and help the maids again, but he assures her that there's no need for her to do that anymore. Then he mentions that there's something he'd like to tell her. So, they embark on a walk and all the while, she's thinking that he's going to break off their engagement. Ordering her to look at him, he reveals his wolf face and asks if she's scared of his bestial form, but she affirms negatively. She goes on to explain that she was scared at first, 
but he took care of her while she was sick, despite his hatred for humans. It had been so long since anyone was kind to her when she was sick, but he touched her so gently, so now she's no longer afraid. After hearing this, Lord Suhako says that he still can't trust the words of humans, but he wants to. At first, he felt like he knew her scent, although he has no recollection of ever meeting her, which is why it bothered him so much. After that, seeing how she kept on looking at him with her honest gaze, he remembered just a little bit how he felt about humans in the distant past. To her greatest surprise, he calls her by her name and asks if he can trust her, is he really going to trust me? She inwardly asks herself, while recalling her uncle's stern warning not to let the Kamashiros know that she already had a failed marriage. But how can she want him to trust her when she still has something she's hiding from him? She decides to spill the bean by revealing that she has already been married once in the past. She begins quivering and stuttering as she tries to explain the reason for her divorce but he holds and comforts her, saying that she doesn't need to force herself to tell him. He then asks if that's why she panicked before and she affirms. In his musings, he says that it must have been why her relationship with her parents soured. Still thinking to himself, he mentions that the Fujigamine family was supposed to have another daughter and that one probably forced Asai to take her place because she didn't want to marry a beast man. He takes her hand and tells her that even if she's been married before, it doesn't change how he feels so she shouldn't worry about it as she's already his fiance. She looks at him stunned before tears start rolling down her cheeks. Worried, he asks why she's crying and she apologizes before stating that it's because she's so happy. Before now, she was afraid that she'd be chased out of the Kamashiro estate just like she had been chased out of everywhere else. Ever since she lost her parents in the fire, she thought that there was no place for her anywhere and she was even afraid of living but Lord Suhako proved her wrong and took her hand. As she continues to cry, she asks if it will be right for her to believe in him too. At the Fujigamine household, SAE's sister, Kachio, is loudly expressing her frustration with the lackluster arranged marriage proposals she has been receiving. She feels that the man she marries must be perfect, unlike her sister who she imagines is living in fear among beast men in a grand mansion. Chio, who is young and very attractive, is confident that she will find an amazing husband whom she can boast about, especially to her sister. Subsequently, Chio continued to receive letters, but they were from people who did not meet her standards. She admits to feeling bored and lonely now that her sister is gone. While she is deep in thought, SAE's dog, Maru, abruptly starts barking at her. Despite all her efforts to make it go away, it keeps on barking at her and she ends up calling on her mother to get rid of the dog. Her mother explains that she wants to get rid of the dog quickly too, but they need to have something to make Kasei grateful to them. They are the ones taking care of her dog, after all, so they might be able to squeeze a little bit more money out of the Kamashiros this way. Shio only pouts as she listens to her mother speak, then she goes to her father to complain that the only thing her mother has been talking about lately is the Kamashiro's money but her father isn't having it at all. Amid a heated argument with her father on the topic, a man arrives to inform him that a letter from the Kamashiro family has arrived. Chio is curious to read the letter first, but her father slams his hand on the table and sends her out of his office. At that moment, she realizes that all they care about is her sister's marriage, even though she has always been the priority. For that reason, she vows never to forgive her sister for stealing her parents' attention from her. Back at the Kamashiro estate, SAE is sitting in front of a mirror in her room, reminiscing about her encounter with Lord Suhako. She finds it hard to believe that he's trusting her, and now, she's more determined to become a lady worthy of his trust. Her thoughts are interrupted by the maid she had helped earlier. The maid apologizes for the sudden visit and returns the handkerchief SAE lent her when she was injured. After expressing her gratitude, the maid asks about SAE's health. SAE then realizes that the maid is the one who found her after she collapsed and apologizes for troubling her. The maid, named Riri, insists that she's the one who has been in the wrong despite SAE's kindness. SAE is touched by this and expresses her happiness hearing the maid say this. As they become friends, Riri, who is a squirrel beast woman, 
reveals that beast people are afraid of humans because they can be arrested immediately if they go against them. Riri proposes to tell everyone about SAE and wants them to know what a kind lady she is, including Lord Suhako. While they are still talking, Lord Suhako unexpectedly walks in, catching them off guard. He tries to speak to SAE but it leads to stammering. The young man he came with teases him for being all bashful when all he needs to do is tell her that he came for a visit. Stunned, SAE is left wondering who the other man is, while Lord Suhako and the man keep on throwing shades at themselves. After a while, he clears his throat and introduces the man as Tadamesa, his aide. Tadamesa begins making spiteful side comments about Asei, but she boldly replies by saying that they'll never stop doubting her if she takes advantage of her status as Lord Suhako's fiancé when she's the only human among beast men. Furthermore, she says that even if it's gradually, she would like to aim to become accepted as Lord Suhako's fiancé. She and Tadamesa engage in a moment of verbal exchange until she finally accepts that rather than speaking out of line, he was just giving her a push. Shocked by her reaction, Tadamesa asks her if she shouldn't be getting angry with him but he gets no initial response. Just then, Lord Suhako smiles and commends Asei for getting a look like that out of his aid but she just stares at him stunned, realizing that it's the first time he has smiled for her. Lord Suhako and Tadamesa engage in a little banter following the Lord's smile, leaving Sae and Riri entertained but Sae finds it strange that they seem more like equal friends than master and servant. Lord Suhako and Sae continue their discussion outside, alongside Tadamesa, where he informs her that he has given Riri orders to tell the other servants that she's officially his fiancé. He suggests that it would be a good idea for Sae to have Riri with her when she's walking around the estate. With that being said, he reveals that there's somewhere he wants to take her. As they get to the building, he mentions that it's his medicine room and workplace, where he cultivates his medicinal herbs and creates medicines. Normally, no one but himself is allowed inside. Is it really okay for me to go inside somewhere so important? SAE asks, and he affirms. He then explains that the reason he came to see her today is because he wanted just the two of them to talk. So, he stretches his hand while requesting hers and offering to show her inside. As they go further into the tour, he urges her to be careful because of the damp ground. Along the line, he stops and poses a question, have you ever seen a beast man eat a human? Sae pauses and remembers her sister's words, then she replies by saying that she hasn't seen it happen herself but she's heard about it happening quite several times. Lord Suhako begins by explaining that man-eating is a deep-rooted issue between their races, though they're often misunderstood, and not all beast men eat humans. He adds that only those who have tasted human blood devour them because the taste of human blood is similar to narcotics to them. Once they've tasted it, they will never forget it, plus it arouses their bestial instincts and drives them to eat humans. He assures her not to worry because he has never eaten a human before and his family will never accept a man-eater. To wrap it up, he vows to protect her. Sae looks at him with her eyes wide open and then she smiles and thanks him. She proceeds to say that while she has been afraid of man-eaters up until now, she will fear them no more because she's with Lord Suhako. A moment later, he turns and asks if it would be okay if he does some work and also tells her that if she'd like to go back to her room, he will have Tadamesa escort her. To his surprise, she offers to help him instead, which he readily accepts. We learn that the Beastman medicine that Lord Suhako creates is a top quality medicine that is said to work against any illness and has been offered to the Emperor for a long time. The Fujigamine Trading Company wants to sell it overseas, and the Kamashiro family wants to spread it, which is why they sought to join their families. Sae's marriage to Lord Suhako was for that purpose, but she wants to be more of a help to him. As he continues working, he asks her to pass him a specific book. When she lifts the book, she reads the title, which is in a foreign language. This surprises Lord Suhako, and he's forced to ask if she can read foreign text. She explains that she lived abroad until she was 15 because of her father's work with the Fujigamine Trading Company. During that time, she became interested in foreign novels and asked her father to buy her some volumes. He taught her the language as they read. 
However, when they returned from abroad, she was forbidden from learning any foreign languages. As a result, she can only kind of read it, but it still makes her happy to see foreign languages again. He's really confused and wants to know why it was a big deal for the daughter of the Fujigamine family to speak foreign languages. He's also wondering why she was forbidden from using them even after her father had put in so much effort to teach her. She explains that it was because her uncle thought that women didn't need education, so he burned all the books her father had given her. As he looks at her, he remarks that he knew something terrible must have happened to her for her to wish she had been dead even in her dreams, but for it to have been this bad, to be treated like that after her uncle took her in, is something he's still trying to understand. Let us know if you enjoyed this story in the comments. Also, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.